So folks, we're here with Lee with Buck Knives, the one and only Buck Knives. And I gotta say, when it comes to us posting content, Buck has got to be one of the most popular things we post. And it's one of the most, I guess, searched terms on our website. And there's a reason for that. People love Buck. It's a name that they know and trust. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the reputation that the company has. And you guys are carrying on that reputation with some really cool new stuff that we've got here on the table. Well, thank you. Let's talk about it, and uh, let's start over here with the with the new EDC series here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for that wonderful intro. So, first new is our tray series. So, available in a full size and a mini. Uh, your more outdoorsy drop point blade serrations, or a tactical inspired ops version that we're calling it. So these are going to have 7CR blade steel, aluminum handles, a uh, reversible pocket clip, uh, liner lock, and they're on bearings. And available in the big guy and oh no, the little one. Nice. And so it's going to come in all of these colors? Yes, sir. And what are we talking price-wise? Price-wise, MSRP on these would be around 65 so... Um, that's what we tell you to sell it for, but I don't know why you listen. <laughs> Sometimes. Yep. Um, yeah. So, and I will say that's not my area of expertise, <laughs> so that is not my responsibility. But these are really cool. And, and I they're say, nice. They're light. Yeah, they are. They work so good. You just, yeah, open and close that a couple times. Man. Ain't that, that something? Sick. <laughs> that is absolutely gorgeous. Nice lockup right there. Mm -hmm. And again, on ball bearing, so that action is super smooth. Mm -hmm. Love that. And now, these I know people are going to be really excited about. Yeah, so let's jump into our new for 2024. We're doing a new shape, a uh, blade shape for our deploy series. So we're doing a Warncliffe. Yes. So again, available in the full size and the mini. Um, Color-wise, we have the kind of the orange, the, the name for it is Tequila Sunrise. Yes. For you Eagles fans. I love it. And also the Northern Lights. Now, if you can kind of see a color shifts from like blue to a green gold, it's yeah. really gorgeous when you get in the sunlight. And of course, uh, we're offering the blackout version. So all black and upgraded to S35VN blade steel. Really slick. I gotta, I gotta say. So this one's gonna be Cali legal. Yep, under two inch blade. That's gonna be a really great little work knife, especially with that Warncliffe blade. Right. Get your finger right out there to the edge, and you can get a lot of control on that cut. But it's still got a big enough handle that you can get all four fingers on there, mm -hmm. and it's really confidence inspiring. And of course, these have always had just a really great action. Awesome snap to them. Yep. It's, it's not gonna fly out of your hand, but at the same time it's getting out there pretty quick so mm -hmm. it's so cool and everybody loves autos you all can't right. not I all mean, right they're so fun they are they absolutely are yeah now one thing that you guys are really known for and uh have been doing for years and years is your hunting knives yes that i mean people have been coming to buck for decades now for hunting knives mm -hmm. so let's talk about your fixed blade series here and uh all these new hunting knives Absolutely. So, last year we launched the Alpha Series, Alpha 2.0. Midway through the year, we launched the model number 663, or the Guide, which is a bigger, kind of all-around hunting outdoors knife. So, we've got one of those here in the walnut with a leather sheath. And now we're going kind of two ways with that. We're offering the Alphas in a select level, so our 420HC um, blade steel, hollow ground, stone washed with a two-shot plastic and rubber handle. These are going to come in a nylon sheath with a nice little leather patch on it with a buck logo. Um, they'll either come with an orange and black or a gray and black. And the 664 is going to come with a gut hook. Yes. So, and these are going to be a great price point. I believe MSRP on these is $90. Nice. And honestly, uh, 420HC is going to be one of the most corrosion resistant blade steels there is out there. It, it is. And it still is to this day. And just because it's a budget steel doesn't mean it's a cheap steel. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's so underrated as a blade steel as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it's been around for a long time, and there's a reason why it has. It's because it's tried and true. Absolutely. It's been used time and time again. And these kind of follow in those footsteps, but there's something a little bit different about these. Yes. So these are the Elite Series. So we're taking these and upgrading, upgrading them to Magna Cut Blade Steel. 
with a mid-panel flat grind, texture G10. It got the black fasteners and one of the most requested things from our customers was a Kydex sheath. They're like, man, this leather is gorgeous. I love it. When can I get Kydex? Well, these will launch with Kydex sheaths and they will be available for purchase uh, separately. Yes. I love this. I love how that's scalloped out right there so you can get a nice finger pinch on it. Mm -hmm. And this one right here has got my heart because that's going to make a great skinner. Absolutely. That and is fantastic. With a magna cut on it, you can use that for days and days and days and thrash on it and it'll just keep going. Absolutely. Now, what have we got right up here? So now up here is our pack light series. This year we're launching them in a V pack, so or value pack, meaning you get two knives. So you're getting the 635 and the 631 uh, mounted together on a carrier. So you can get those in our with either the orange or the black with the 420, or upgraded to the S35 VN with the OD green micarta. Uh, another cool feature with these is there is a thumb screw. That's kind of a secondary retention on these, and you can cooperate. <laughs> a little tight first, pop that out. So if you're hunting with your buddy, you need to loan him a knife. Right. You can do that. And then at the end of the day, snap it back down. Secondary retention right there. I love it. It takes me back because, and I've been wondering for a few years now when we were going to modernize because I can remember growing up back in my day, one of the most popular sets of knives was the old school stack leather handle, leather sheath, hunting knives, you had the big one on the inside, you had the little one on the outside, but this is a modernization of that and something that's gonna kind of harken back to the old school way, but uh, in a new school way. Yeah, no, these and these have been a fun project from start to finish, figuring out how to bundle these two knives together. And um, the price with these, it's gonna end up saving you about five or $10 to buy the pack versus buying them individually. Nice. That is awesome, especially in this economy, right? of course. <laughs> so right over here, we've got some gorgeous stuff. What have we got going on? So these are our uh, legacy or limited edition knives for 2024. Uh, first, we've got the 838 Deploy uh, legacy or limited edition. So you're getting marbled carbon fiber, copper accents, and these are real copper. They're not coated or anything. That's solid nice. copper. S45 VN blade steel, Cerakote on it. Um, it's got that removable, reversible pocket clip, and just feel the weight and the action of that. Oh, yeah. That is just... <laughs> that is solid <laughs> perfection right there. It's super lightweight, but it feels so sturdy. Right, and right. so solid in the hand. Absolutely. That is beautiful. And uh, that coating on the blade just sets it off, too. Mm -hmm. No, we're, we're very proud of that one. Heck, yeah. Um... Next to that, taking kind of a new school, old school, mixing it together, we have the 500 Duke. So this is going to be in an S30V blade steel. It's a long pull nail notch, kind of an old school throwback, a straight clip, bare head construction, so only your front bolster, but no rear bolster, marbled carbon fiber, and we mounted a pocket clip on it. So that's a problem we hear from our customers from time to time is, hey, I love these old knives. I don't want to carry a sheath, and I don't want it rattling around my pocket. Right. So we put a pocket clip on it. That is beautiful right there. And uh, one thing to note too, I'm looking at uh, flathead screws right in there. So that's gonna go in and out of the pocket, yep. super simple. I, I love this. <laughs> and again, classic feel, classic look, but uh, with some modern touches there. And Absolutely. I, I love seeing the progression of that because I'm one of those that has a hard time letting go of the things yep. that I've always liked. So that's that's perfect. And then to go along with that. So you've grabbed the 112 TRX titanium. So we took our TRX model, upgraded it to a blasted titanium handle, bronze PVD fasteners, S45 VN blade steel, a reversible pocket clip. So this is kind of a follow up to the 110 we did for 2023. Uh, it's very lightweight, feels just rock solid. Absolutely. And, and getting it, getting that 112 with uh, with thumb studs too. I, yes, I, I really enjoy that. <laughs> and that snap when that lock snaps into place is so confidence inspiring. <laughs> and then what is this baby right here? So now that's our 112, more of the classic, uh, the classic style and design. So we're calling that the scalloped. It's a follow up to the 110 we did in 2023, but you're getting a drop point, uh, scalloped rich light handles, bare head construction. It's gonna come with a Maiden USA leather sheath. 
Um, yeah, just great to complete the set from last year, or if exactly. you don't like the size of the 110. Exactly. I mean, I really see that being something very popular for collectors. Mm -hmm. They got the 110 version. Now they want to get the 112 version. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. Yeah, absolutely. So next, getting into the big fixed blades. So we have our 402 Akanua. This knife was first introduced in 1972, and it's been out of the catalog since 1997. So we brought it back this year, trying to replicate a lot of what we had with it originally. So you're getting the micarta handles, in this case burlap, the red paper spacer, um, and even our sheath, we reached back in time and went to a riveted sheath instead of a stitched one, which is like how it was in the 70s. Right. And that's going to be a made in USA sheath as well. And this looks full tang as well. Full tang, yep. That's so nice. not only is it beautiful, you could actually use it as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and S35 VN on the blade steel, that is just, and the grip, I can't convey the ergonomics of this. It it doesn't look like it would be as ergonomic as it is, but it fits in the hand Just fits so perfect, well. right? That is a beautiful blade. Oh, a work you. of art. It really is. <laughs> and then what is this beast right here? Oh, so finally, this is our Buckmaster 2.0. We're releasing this to coincide with the 40th anniversary of the original Buckmaster. <laughs> Oh man. man, I just, <laughs> pulling that out of the sheath just gave me so much joy. I turned <laughs> into a child again, I oh, really did. Love to hear it, love to hear it. <laughs> and the texturing on this handle is nice and aggressive, but not too aggressive. I mean, it's, again, very confidence inspiring, but it's not ripping up your hand. Exactly. It's not gonna rip up the side of your clothes or anything like that, but it just feels really good in the hand. And that blade shape, right. that is just so sexy. So we worked in collaboration with uh, Commander Coulter, the designer of the original, Rich Nyman, the, the go-to historian on these, to basically create a version 2.0, not just make the old one again, but right. an updated, improved version. Uh, we even have a special heat treat of our 420 on this. So it's, I believe it's triple tempered to make it even tougher. Wow. So okay. this is going to be, so far, this is the only 420HC blade with the boss stamp on it. That's the boss really marking. cool. Uh, now go into the sheath, uh, made in USA Kydex sheath. The blade can go in either way. Yep. The nylon backer is made in USA, and this has what we're calling the emergency anchor wing on it. So, if you remember, the original Buckmaster had those um, the the prongs that right. screw onto it. Well, yes. We brought that back, and instead of screwing onto it now, it slides through, clicks into place. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is it right there. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that can be deployed, deployed the prongs facing forward or backwards. Right. Uh, there is also a slot in the sheath, so if you remove it from the backer, you can have the blade in there, put this through, so if you do need to use it as a anchor, as the name implies, your blade edge won't get beat up on uh, okay. whatever you're anchoring with. That is super cool right there. That's fantastic. Now, my next question is, when are we going to be able to see all this? When is this going to hit store shelves? So this should be hitting store shelves probably middle of next month to probably towards the end of it. Okay. Um, yeah, also... Now, across the board, what, what are we talking about time-wise for, for seeing all this in the store? Yeah, so these guys probably middle of February, we'll have them be shipping them out. These guys probably end of February. Okay. Yep. That is awesome. I gotta say that's that's really inspiring for me because a lot of times we get uh, we get video content and we get to see knives very early and they're like, oh, but that's not gonna be out for another six months, eight months. Right. You lose all the hype. Well, that's great. But, yeah. <laughs> and that's what's wonderful about this. We're we're gonna get to see this within the next month and a half, and that's yep. fantastic. <laughs> Lee, thank you so much. Hey, man. thank you. Appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Folks, you know where to get your buck knives right here at smkw.com. So, folks, you're probably wondering where's the case stuff with Mari? That's right. Where well, is it? If we've already done that video, <laughs> and all you got to do is click the link in the description below, and you'll see all, all the new stuff the new from stuff. Case. Yes, sir. So, folks, we're here with the one and only Eric Lesser. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to get to sit down with you and talk to you about your knives. I mean, Spyderco has 
probably one of the best reputations in the knife business. I can honestly say from my perspective, uh, and I've, got, I've actually got a nephew, uh, former Marine, and um, he was talking to me the other day, not too long ago, and uh, he was like, I won't own anything but a spider coat. Like oh, he said, that's what I used when I was in the military, and he said, that's all I will ever use. And that really speaks to not only the durability, but the reputation that you guys have as a company and what you guys have built over the years. Thank you. That's very kind. I Absolutely. appreciate it. So and now we've got on the table some really cool new stuff that I'm really excited to see. What have we got here? Uh, so everything you're going to see here is going to be delivered in the near future. And then we've got a couple of sneak peeks that are later in the year that I'll show you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, the one thing I was going to start with, just because it happens to be on my left, it's not a new item, but it's a new coating. So we're going to bring in uh, some new coatings to the market. Um, you'll see that this is an FDE. This is an all black, so um, flat, dark earth. Uh, so what we've done is we brought coating in-house. Um, yeah. And we're bringing a new coating to the market. Uh, so you're going to be able to get some lower cost coatings from us, more reasonable um, and higher performing. Um, mm -hmm. And so right now, DLC, incredibly popular, one of the best coatings ever, you right. know, a carbon-based coating. Gives you uh, great toughness, uh, very hard and really resilient to wear. Um, gives you great black color uh, and good lubricity. That's one of the reasons that DLC became so popular. Um, so we are going to be bringing a new coating to the market, though, that is not DLC. Uh, brings the same resistance as far as your wear resistance. Get your same black color, except for it's not going to heat the steel as much. So it gives you more options in your steel grade. So it's not tempering it. And it has added lubricity. So this is a very lubri uh, lubricated steel. <laughs> nice. um, gives you great edge retention. We're still uh, trying to get some numbers, but it, it seems to have as good a lubricity as a satin polish or even better. Wow. Uh, so it's just a pleasure to cut with, pleasure to give it action. Uh, not quite on the market yet, and I can't reveal the coating yet, um, but it is coming down the pipe. We should be delivering our new coatings um, by summertime, I would guess. That is super cool. And you'll notice that the uh, the liners are FDE on that piece, so we can do liners. We're going to be looking at hardware. We're really going to be opening up uh, some of our coatings. So really excited about our coatings that we're bringing up on your plate and that's really cool too because you, you see so many times i mean a lot of people want coatings on their blades depending on what the blade still is or depending on what the color scheme is but then there are some companies that don't do it right and you end up with a very rough texture when you go to open it right. and it takes a lot of break in yeah. but with this i mean this thing is insanely smooth like immediately that is just butter smooth and i'm sure that's what you're talking about with the All electricity right. that's that really is what makes the difference the experience of cutting with it is the fun part just uh, oh that felt great yeah uh and so yeah i'm really excited that we're moving into this new direction also we do so many salts we're kind of the you know corrosion resistant king in a lot of ways i feel right. um and with our salts, you'll notice that we do coat the hardware quite often. Yeah. And so, you know, to bring some of this in-house was good for us because we're doing more and more of it. On our salts, though, our materials are corrosive resistant, like our hardware. Adding that coating just adds more resistance to yeah. that. So um, it was timely for us to go in that direction, and uh, we're excited to be bringing something new to the market. That is awesome. I'll tell you exactly what the, the we call it later on when... Because I don't want to give too much out until we're delivering it. There we go. But it's fun. I like it. Uh, the next one I was going to show is the Military 2. Uh, this is an iconic piece for Spyderco, the Military. Uh, we evolved it last year, or I think just the year before. Um, so we're doing um, this crew wear canvas micarta version. Um, uh, we're going to be doing this more and more across the board. So don't be surprised if you start seeing it damn near on everything. Right. Um, but it takes new engineering. Right. So when you see that canvas micarta, because it's so thin, you know, it, it flexes. It, it just doesn't have the strength of steel or G10. Right. So we have to re-engineer it. You'll see the full liners um, to give it that strength. Um, you can tell this one's brand new because of how light and, and shiny it is. It hasn't look. accepted any oil from the fingers no, yet. No, it hasn't gotten beautified fully <laughs> yet. Um, but, yeah, we're really expanding our crew wear micarta versions. Uh, the Military 2 should be coming shortly. And then we'll be revealing more as we go along. But we're going hard and heavy after those crew wear 
canvas micarta's. That is awesome. So, uh, just a little bit originally. So, the original military came out in what the mid to late nineties. About ninety six, I believe. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, it was also the first steel that used a crucible powdered metal. We used four forty V back then. Yep. We were the people that helped bring crucible in. Uh, and it's evolved so much through the years. So now you see that compression lock, so much strength, uh, very safe to use, uh, very easy in its action. The compression yep. lock, still one of the best. Um, and then we had improved construction, changed its ergonomics. I mean, it really has some constant quality improvements through the year. Absolutely. Uh, so definitely has proven itself and, and is a trustworthy item. I love it. I love it. Uh, next, you want to go over the Magna Cut Para 2s? Yes. All right. So again, these are all salts. Uh, these are uh, going to be highly corrosive resistant. Now, when you look at some of our H2, H1 salts, this is not as corrosive as resistant as those. Right. And H2, you know, you could chip out a co coral and it still hasn't rusted. Right. Um, but this is highly rust resistant. If you're in a lake, it's going to do all you need. Yep. Uh, where we really took it to the next level, though, is in these G10 scales. You start making lightweight or salt knives that aren't lightweights and you add scales to them, it gets way more complicated in the engineering and the material selection. Right. And so in this one, we use a yellow and black textured uh, G10. Uh, with this, you know, because it is layered, we make sure that we get as much of that yellow pop as you can. You're going to notice it's bi-directional texturing. It has kind of this rib that goes through so that if you flip your clip or you're going in and out of the pocket, it goes in with great ease. Um, also, the texture comes to the end and then pops up and out and is, is radius here a little bit for going in and out of the pocket so that you're not raking it. But when you're holding it, it gives you all that grip. Right. Uh, and then because it's a Magna, call, magna Cut, uh, highly corrosive resistant, um, all the materials have been built for that. Uh, and then we're going to offer the blacked out version. Um, the blacked out version, as an added bonus on this one, it also has the peel ply in there. Yeah. Um, so you have the rib, the bi-directional, the four-way, and then a little bit of peel ply. Everything blacked out, Magna Cut. Heat treated and done right. That's fantastic. Um, yes. So, yeah, those have uh, been getting some good reviews. And, again, like the crew wear, you're going to start seeing a lot of this across the board from Spyderco right. because we've got the recipe right. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. I, I absolutely love that. And up next is one that I just recently did a video on um, because I was so excited to see and that's going to be that Mannix 2. Yep, Mannix 2, uh, you know, 20-year reputation, wonderful knife. Uh, it's got that ball bearing lock, incredibly safe, very strong, very safe during use, uh, bi-directional texturing, uh, wire clip, screw together construction. As you notice, it is screw together construction. The old ones used to be riveted. Right. It gives us a little bit more. That's our CQI. Um, but now it's a Magna Cut salt version. Um, yes. And it's that bright popping yellow. So if you're diving with it, you're... You're going down into a deep atmosphere or just about any task, right. you're going to be able to find it. And super lightweight, too. I mean, for, for this size of knife, to have that kind of strength and stability, but to be that lightweight, it just seems almost criminal. It's it's not even fair. It is. It's it's a wonderful piece of evolution. <laughs> it is, that's, you know. That's beautiful. And, of course, the, the Mannix 2 is one of Isaac's favorites. I actually got him his first Mannix 2 for Christmas a few years ago. So... He still carries that one, but uh, a phenomenal design and uh, a great evolution of that series there. Yeah, thanks. It's been getting great reviews. Uh, and then what you're also going to start seeing with uh, the U.S. facility is that we've designated our Magna Cut for yellow, and then we're still rolling our LC200 in a green. Nice. And so if you want to quickly tell one from the other, Magna Cut's yellow, LC200 in is green, both incredibly rust resistant, both great wear resistance, um, nice salt pieces. Now, they aren't as corrosive resistant as H2, like I said right. earlier, um, but it does bring a lot of corrosion resistance to the yeah. market. Yeah. And so uh, with the Chief, I know I've talked about this in the past, but it's linerless, um, so it's super light, yeah. gives you a lot of blade. Uh, that full flat and that double distal tipper uh, just, just taper, uh, just cuts and little stabby, if you will. Uh, great jimping, solid lockup, that self-close. You can hear it, you can feel it. The action just drops. You can overcome that self-close. And then when it locks, you can hear it. Yeah. It's secure. It's not going anywhere. Uh, very strong, very light, um, a high-performing piece in both LC and, and uh, Magna Cup. 
And so how long have you guys been working? I know LC200 has been out for a little. How long have you guys been making uh, the LC200 salt series? Ooh, I want to say three or four years, but I'm just guessing. The original chemistry actually goes back to the 90s, though. NASA created a seal called Chronidor. Zap took the chemistry. They re-brought it to the market as an LC200N. Uh, we knew all about Chronidor back in the day, so when we heard right. about it, we jumped all over it. Um, and it's been a fun pleasure to work with. It is. They're both great steels. They really are. And so, uh, and I'll speak to this really quick too. Uh, we have a lot of people that always ask what the symbols are on the blade right there. Designer marks. So those yeah. are your designer marks. Um, of course, you're going to see the E for Eric. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the S kind of designed for your yeah. father, Sal. Yeah. When you typically see them both, oftentimes my dad did the original. Right. You know, he did the original native. Um, and so uh, he even drew up a chief back in the day, um, but mine was a little different. Uh, and so when I when I pick up one of my dad's designs and I and I you know embellish on it, bring it to a new design pattern, uh, we share a tag on it. That's so you'll awesome. see that for the military too, uh, the para two, the chief. There's a number of knives we've kind of collaborated together on. That's really cool. Uh, That's really cool, and a sense of pride I'm sure for both of you. Oh, I I love working with my father. It's yeah. one of the greatest joys of my life. Nice. Yeah. So this one is going to be the pair of three. And I got to say, this one is my favorite pattern that you guys make. It is um, one of our top sellers, most most carried products that we yeah. make. It has really proven itself out. And this one's coming in Magna Cut now. In Magna Cut. Uh, corrosion resistant, compression lock. You know, we, we, we love making a lightweight compression lock. Not so easy, uh, but once we overcame the adversity, it brings a lot to the table. Yeah. And... One thing I want to point out that I don't think I've noticed before uh, is going to be the the sheath screws right there. So they're going to be encapsulated right there. And this is going to be kind of a linerless design right here as well. It, it does have Somewhere. the single liner that's right. the lock, but the other side actually has a little tiny internal liner here for added strength. Right. But all of those were using corrosive resistant materials and then doing additional coating. Um, and, and really, you can't just grab you know, corrosive resistant materials and throw them together and hope it works. Right. You know, they, there's, gee, I'm probably giving out a lot here, but when you start mixing, you know, chemistries and putting it in environments, it could act one way in, a, in an environment. And then when you add another chemistry even near it, it can react differently. Right. And so, you know, we've done a lot of testing and, and narrowing down what we need to be using and how to use it. So that's awesome. And, and the way that you guys made this is made the pair of three, which was already great, even more lightweight too, at the same time. And I mean, for something, I mean, it's a full size knife, but you almost don't even know that it's there. And it's so much control over that too. It just fits in the hand really nice. I love it. Yeah, getting three inch blades where you can get a nice full grip on it, even with a bigger handle, you gotta be creative in those ergos. Um, like. May I real quick? Yeah. One of the things I love about this one is even if you were to choke back and not use the four finger choil, your pinky kind of falls in this back corner. Right. And even the tail of it acts as kind of your grip. Yeah. And so it really gives you both options. Highly evolved design. Yeah. Definitely. Love that. What have we got here? Uh, so we work with uh, Lion Steel, a uh, company out of Italy, Monte Auto Italy. Uh, they uh, have a reputation for some of the highest quality knives in the world. And they make a knife called um, the Mito. And so we took their Mito and we spiderized it. We added a Spiderco round hole, uh, an hourglass clip, um, and then we did a flash batch with them. So a flash batch is something we do one time and that's it. It's done after that. So we're going to do 2,000 pieces. comes in canvas micarta, a Reeve integral lock with a stainless interface, M398. Uh, the flipper is removable, and it's a 2,000-piece flash bash, and then, uh, then done. So for all of you collectors out there, you want to get your hands on this one while you can, because they're not going to last long. They're already oversold. <laughs> <laughs> so, so get in on it. <laughs> that is super cool right there, and absolutely gorgeous. And I love also uh, this backspacer right here, which you can't actually see through. And that's just, I mean, just another one of those little design touches that just looks really good and fits with the design. And the crown spine on the blade. Lion Steel does an absolute wonderful job. I, I so value that they continue to work with us. Yeah. You know, it's a real pleasure to work with those guys. Now I gotta say, this one's my most anticipated one personally after seeing the pictures. And What's in my pocket? <laughs> I, I can understand why. I mean, 
This is, so what's the name of this one first off? Bodacious. The Bodacious. Yeah. And I saw pictures of this one last week for the first time, and I was like completely intrigued and just blown away. Immediately I was like, that, I'm going to have to get that one in hand because it looks like my style. So what uh, what kind of went into this, and, and where did this come from? Uh, there's a knife we make called the Shaman, fairly popular. Uh, we made that as a hard-use, do-anything kind of knife. Uh, rounded scales, thicker blade, thicker tip, compression lock. It's a beast of a knife. Um, so this is my, uh, South Lesser design, my father. He took that Shaman, and he wanted to make a brother, if you will. So this has the edge that goes all the way to the back, so we eliminated the four-finger choil so you get more cutting. Um, then it has a, a nice guard in the front, so you're not going to really slide up on it. The bevels, again, I'm all about bevels. Really proud of these bevels. You have your corner plunge in the back. I know some people want a little choil back there, but we don't like a choil. It sometimes catches things, gets to be a problem. Um, so the edge goes all the way to the back with the straight plunge. It actually thickens a little bit at the tip, and then we left steel there at the top. So you get that full flat grind cut but you get the strength of, of that top spine. Right. Um, and then it comes with flat um, polished scales. So it slides in the packet a little bit different than a lot of our peel plies. It's thinner, open construction. Um, it, it's a lean, mean shaman in a lot of ways. Yes, it is. Um, that was kind of the, the philosophy behind it. That is awesome. I just love the feel of this. And I love the simplicity of it. It's, it's like, well, like you said, it's a lean, mean shaman. It's yeah. it's a simpler shaman. And, I mean, there's so many people out there that love the shaman anyways. That's been one of the most popular ones that we've seen as far as sales goes over the last few years. It can be a little thick and heavy in the pocket for some people, depending on what your daily carrying tasks are. Right. And, and that's why we leaned it down a little bit. Yeah. And it gives you that added edge. A lot of people aren't as into four-finger choils as much. Right. They just want all that edge they can get. Yeah. So, yeah, the bodacious. Heck, yeah. And uh, what is this little guy right that's here? That's a little native and a lightweight. Uh, so the little native is a U.S. knife we make. That's a two and a half inch folder. We make it in a black lock, a back lock in G10 and a compression lock. Now we wanted to make it thinner and lighter, easier to carry. And when you go to a lightweight, making a knife that small in a compression lock, not a good idea. No. Um, and so we went to a back lock. So you're going to have that great strength, that great self close, bi-directional texturing, deep pocket wire clip, two and a half inches in length really thin so it's a slicer it's easy to carry um even stuffed a little lantern hole in the back yes. uh, and and so um if you're looking for a smaller edc it's going to be tough to beat we have a knife called the dragonfly carried for more than 25 years right. um if you're into that kind of size knife this is right there with it um it, it is a, a wonderful everyday carry and i mean i don't have any i don't have large hands by any means very medium-sized hands but using that four finger troll I get all four fingers on there without without an issue at all. And it's I, it feels like I'm carrying a full-size knife, but then I've got the control of a smaller blade. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I've always listened to Ben Peterson a lot, and he always loves being able to reach out to the tip of that knife if you're doing hard work yeah. and actually being able to cut and really control the tip of that knife with your in index finger. And you know right where the tip is because yeah. you know where your finger is. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that is a beautiful design. And, again, another great iteration to add on to that series. Thanks for all the compliments. I Absolutely. love it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we're here. So this is all revealing, coming out real soon. We revealed it. Some of it have already delivered, and the rest we're delivering shortly. Nice. Then I thought some sneak peeks, because I like showing you some sneak peeks. Yes. So uh, this stuff is going to be coming out um, later in the year, probably around summertime. So I'll just kind of jump into each one. Yep. I, how about we start with this? Because I know this is coming down the pipe pretty quick. This is another collaboration with Big Brown Bear. Uh, it's a 15V model. So we took our classic pair of three, lo rolled it into a lightweight pair of three. Um, so you get a reduced cost, you get a great size, and you get that hardcore performance of the 15V. Um, again, it's a sprint. So don't be surprised. I do anticipate these to go pretty quick. Yes. And I can say, I know all of you out there that are big 15B fans that have been screaming for it and wanting more of it, get them while you can because they're not going to last long. I know they're not going to. So I'm, now I'm previewing a little ahead ahead. But um, so we do reveals, as you know, through the year and we number them um, rather than doing, you know, seasonal or spring. Right. We like to number them almost like comic books, if you will. Yeah. So the next reveal is reveal 15. And we're going to have a lot of 15V in it. 
That is awesome. Right. That is perfect. Yeah. Very apropos. Absolutely. Um, and then the next ones, I guess I'm previewing a little early, but we are they are on their way. We have a Sage and a Cobalt Blue Lightweight Handle and Spy 27 Blade. And then we have a Burnt Orange Lightweight Sage and Rex 121. So another super steel that Spyderco is yes. going to get done. Um, and that's one thing that I love. You guys do so many different kinds of steels to cater to so many different knife users. And you guys aren't afraid to do something with steels that nobody else is even touching. And, and that's very appealing, but it also speaks to your all's knowledge of how to heat treat and how to work the steel and how it operates too. Yeah, you know, first I have to give hats off to the foundry for even making it. Rex 121 is not easy to make. So Crucible, awesome for them doing it. I really appreciate them overcoming the adversities and I know they overcame adversities. Uh, and then, yeah, once you get it, then you have to fabricate it. How do you grind it? How do you shape it? How do you cook it? Um, does it even lock up solid when you're done? Right. And so, yeah, taking that obstinate material and shaping it just like you want, uh, we take great pride in that. Yeah. That's Down awesome. to less than a half a thou. Right. No. Oh, man. That's yeah. incredible. And that's all to bring you guys the best knife you could possibly get. Eric, thank you so oh, much, thank man. Oh, thank you. Thanks you for stopping awesome. by. And we are Appreciate super excited it. to get all these in store. Hey, guys. You're here checking out smkw.com, but you got some new stuff here from Condor Tool and Knife. I'm Joe Flowers, one of the designers for Condor Tool and Knife, but not the only one. We got a whole ton of new stuff here to show you. But real quickly, I want you guys to check out this. This is called the Bush Sky. It is modeled after a scan dude, the Scottish Highland, you know, style knife, but in a bushcraft version. Kind of took an amalgam or a, a mixture of that style to put this knife into, into place. So it's a boot knife. It works well for uh, neck knives. It comes in 14C, 28N stainless steel. Um, and that's brand new this year. We have some other very interesting new stuff. This one's the combo by my very, very good friend, Goran Mikalovich. Um, he lives in the Amazon jungle, but he's from Serbia and he has a very European style slash jungle style of, of doing some really, really cool designs. That's brand new this year too. And this one's made out of 1075 high carbon steel. Isaac, I got a big one for you guys too. This one's called the Rude Boy. The Rude Boy is kind of different because trying to reinvent a machete is a little bit difficult. But El Salvador has this rich, rich machete culture. And we kind of wanted to do a, a machete 2.0. So that's where the Rude Boy came in. It has that very Latin American style to it. But it's a little bit different. We have a larger grind. Them grinds work very well to take weight out. But it also makes it look cool. And a very distinct machete style handle, kind of like the old 1800s Collins style handles that are out there. That's brand new this year too. It comes with the full, fully uh, welted leather sheath and everything on these tables are all lifetime warranties. So if you have any problems, you let us know and we will help out to make sure that we can fix anything your cutting needs desire. You can find out more stuff at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, um, looking up Condor to a knife. Um, you can find it at smkw.com and also condortoolknife.com. Hey everybody, Bryce, we're here at SHOT Show, CRKT booth with Philip Booth. We're really excited this year. Um, we have new American-made automatics. Obviously, Philip was a natural person to partnership with since you make a lot of autos. Um, we've got a couple new ones. You want to tell us a little bit about the, the first couple there, the Mishkas? Yes. Um, yes, I do. <laughs> this is a... a a fabulous knife. Columbia River just, you know, Robin, actually, man, that guy is, he's, you know. And so this is a knife that I have um, made and carried for mm, 20 years. Uh, and it's got a, uh, you slide the back. There we go. And so if when you slide the back, it opens. And so when you do this, it's the exact same movement. It locks down. It is this. This is a one-hand knife. Yep. You know, no, no, you know, and, you know, uh, and I just, I just love them. I, I've always liked, I've always liked switchblades. 
you know, I always liked automatics. I've just been hooked forever. Um, basically, the same knife. They're using uh, Magna Cut steel, for goodness sakes, you know. Um, this is uh, transparent G10 with a black stripe. This black stripe is part of my design. Uh, I like to repeat lines, you know, which is, you know, and Columbia River just nailed this, you know, so that the plunge grind and the, and the stripe, everything lines up, you know, that's doesn't make it go faster, doesn't make it cut better, but, but you know, it's just, just designed. This is a uh, black, same knife, uh, with a gray transparent, I believe, stripe, which which I love because it just kind of goes away at the top and the bottom. Uh, everything's black, opens like a dream, and again, Magna Cut, you know. It's really uh, cool. I like how it also like kind of partners with some of your other knives you made, like the Rip Snort. You have that sort of, you can see the same Philip Booth sort of DNA in there. Yes. Your design style. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I really you. like seeing that. Yep. I, yep. I love the stripe and the line and everything up. The um, Rip Snort, of course, is is uh, on. Uh, I'm sure you guys have got Rip Snort. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. The you best know. names in the knife world, I feel like. I yeah. love that name. Is that fun? Big bad guy knife, too. I like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Rip Snort came from my dad. Uh, a snort was a was a shot of whiskey, okay. Uh, the rip kind of got put in there, you know. But but you know, whenever my dad had a had a drink, uh, which wasn't often, you know. But it was he was an old guy, you know. And a drink was a shot of whiskey, you know. And it was always yeah, oh, poor snort. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I did not know that's awesome. Yeah. Well, this is these have got a fun name too, Mishika. Mishika, yes. Um, coming home from Blade Show last year, um, Sherry, my wife Sherry, and I were uh, coming up with names. Naming stuff is very hard, uh, and so I am from uh, Michigan, and I live in a small town named Ithaca. We put it together in Michigan, and uh, uh, man, CRKT jumped on that, and it was, it's, you know, I, I love that, you know. It rolls off the tongue. Michigan. It does. Michigan. I like you it. Know. Heck yeah. Yep. We got one more here, too, I think. Uh, all our friends in California, very excited. They can have a, have a CRKT Philip Booth auto. So this is called a minnow, and uh, minnows, uh, minnows are actually my baby. Okay, uh, 1996, uh, I was making a couple of really small little lockback knives, kind of oval with a little blade that came out. Honestly, they weren't even very good. Um, but I, I, you know, I came to a show in Vegas, and it's all anybody wanted to look at. You know, it's these little bitty strange knives. Uh, the reason it's a minnow is because the original looked like a classic pattern uh, sunfish knife, except really small. I figured if it's a small sunfish, it has to be a minnow. Uh, through the years, uh, I have, this is a push button auto. Um, it, the cleaver blade fits, fits so well, uh, gives you a big straight edge, you know, a serious cut knife. Um, it's little, uh, California legal, um, small enough so that you're not going to, uh, scare all the women and kids. Um, and, and, you know, they just knocked this knife out of the park. Uh, they got a stone wash. Um, uh oh, I'm not going to remember what kind of steel it is. It's Magna Cut. It's Magna Cut too. Ooh, you know, with stainless steel, uh, bolsters that are integral to the knife. Um, I think this is G10, paper G10? It's a paper, I think. Yeah, paper yeah, Micarta? It might be a paper Micarta, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, push button, you know, very very simple design. It's the button lock that, you know, they're on 800 million knives across <laughs> the country, you know, but, but they work good and uh, they last. Um, super fun knife. California dreaming, the minnow. <laughs> That's really cool. And I was fortunate enough to actually see your custom at the knife show uh, out in Seaside, Oregon this uh, yes. summer. And I, what's one of my favorite things about CRKT is when we can nail, make it look a lot like your auto, you know, and um, that, I think it looked a lot like it. I really like to be as close to it. And I think we, I think Hogue and, and Robin did a great job. They sent me one of these. Um, 
both of them actually, and I took them apart. And uh, yeah, I got worried, uh, <laughs> you know, because you know Robin's got um, stop pins and screws and differences all the way through that uh, are not like mine, but way better, way better. Um, and and but at the same time. They look exactly the same. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, you know, the lines and the shape and the size uh, are exact. You know, and and it's like, yeah, I wish I made one that looked as cool as that. <laughs> you know, I go, wow, you know, and look, man, you know. Well, that's yeah, that's cool. That's really what we do. At CRKT trying to take awesome custom designs and bring them to you at a kind of affordable price and get a cool, have a cool Philip Booth knife. Really sweet. I, I'm really excited about our new like products, and I think we got some else coming out. Made in USA. Made in USA, right down the road in uh, Henderson, Nevada. It's really cool with Hogue. I'm really excited about all that. But for all the new knife content, you guys, for more Philip Booth, for TC, where are you going to go? SMKW.com. Where else? <laughs>